What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to the Visual Studio 2017 launch. I'm so excited to be back yet again on camera. Third time's a charm. But with me this time, I don't even have to demo. I can just shut this. I'm done. Now, I'm going to be monitoring tweets just in case you have some posts. My good friend, Carol. How's it going, Carol? Awesome, James. And it's such an order to be here on this exciting day, launching VS 2017. How many versions did we launch? 2017. Uh, that that is the correct one. Look in your directories, uh, program files, x86, uh, 2017. No. Um, I'm super excited because I forever have been working on the Xamarin side of things, showing devs how amazing it is to build these native applications. And you've worked so much on different databases and all this stuff. And today, you're going to be talking about how Xamarin developers can really leverage this amazing service. The first time you showed it to me and demoed it to me, I was blown away, called DocumentDB. And you can see there's some love going on. Lots of, you can see all the hearts on my shirt. <laughs> Lots of love going on for, uh, for not only Xamarin, but for DocumentDB. Can you, can you, I think a lot of Xamarin developers, and maybe even just developers in general, maybe brand new to DocumentDB, can you just kind of give the 30 second minute, two minute pitch of what is DocumentDB? Oh, absolutely. And the important part is that any love relationship has to be grounded in long-term tangible qualities. Sure. DocumentDB has plenty of them, and so does Xamarin. So let's take a look. First of all, DocumentDB is a NoSQL database as a service on Azure. It offers you the benef benefits that database offer you, which is rich query, and at the same time, does not require you to maintain a schema for your data. So no schema at all. No okay, schema so whatsoever. So don't have to worry about primary keys, relations, all this stuff. Or, exactly. You know. That's what like, folks call these NoSQL databases. Okay. And there are quite a few of, of them on the market. Uh, and they all tend to be coalesced around several scenarios, or a bunch of scenarios these days, which all have three similar properties, right? It's schema and data varies. Okay. over and over. And it's very, especially very uh, um, relevant to mobile development because as you, most of you have tens of different versions of your app out there and they're all speaking with different data structures Yeah, because data structure change over time. Um, most of apps these days deal with lots of data. Like if you're building IoT systems, etc., you're dealing with lots of data, large ingestion volumes. And high throughput, and, low, and at the same time, you need to offer very low latency access. Your apps need to be snappy, right? This yep. is, it should be. These three things is what especially uh, makes DocumentDB stand out. It offers you rich query, no schema. It gives you limitless scale. You can store petabytes of data in it if you need to. It offers you less than 10 millisecond latencies for reads and writes against the databases while sustaining this hu humongous uh, millions of requests per second volume, throughput volume. It allows you to go global mm -hmm. if you need to. Uh, your app can be global, distributed across 34 Azure regions, and it keeps growing yep, uh, if you really day. need to, right? Every, every time uh, I see Scott Guthrie give another presentation, the number keeps, keeps going More and more and more. Yep. And it's all transparent to your app, right? You just keep your writing your data, and it's available to your users no matter where they are at the same low latency. So you would say super low latency, tons of data, um, everywhere you possibly need it. And the most important is this NoSQL. I'm so used to SQL, 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 and structures. So my application, I, I noticed that you know, 10% of users are on version one, and then, you know, I have 90% uh, on version two, and then, you know, it, it kind of all different varies. But I may change the scheme, and it doesn't matter, essentially. That's the idea. Yep. You can have the schema, it just figures it out, and it doesn't matter. Yep, so super exactly. fast, yep. low latency, global, no schema. And a bunch of other yeah. features which we'll dive into as yeah. we go through the demo. So cool. let's dive in, right? Yep. Um, you start with Azure DocumentDB in, the, uh, in Azure Portal. Logical, okay. right? So you just, here we have, on the left now, we have NoSQL DocumentDB database as a service. No, it's DocumentDB R. It's our database. Then. It's, it's our database. Yes, got it. It's our, it's Azure uh, database, NoSQL database as a service. And it's pretty easy to create one if you don't have, don't have one already. And note that you can choose, so you just need to give it a name and tell it where to run. And you can choose different APIs. Mm -hmm. So we give you a rich query in variety of formats. You can use SQL query, for example. Okay, Even though it's you. a NoSQL yeah. database, you can still use your, your yeah, SQL skills. A lot of people are used there. to SQL. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can use Mongo, and that's a very popular API out there. And this is supported at a protocol level, so no matter which MongoDB driver for any mm -hmm. language you use, it'll work against DocumentDB. 
Now, I already have one create, pre created right here. And once you create a DocumentDB account, you're greeted with, with an invitation for a tutorial, right? Uh, which is kind of a decent thing to and, do. And I see that you put it in the farthest region away from us on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. C couldn't you choose the Seattle-based region? I could, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the good thing is we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to correct that. <laughs> okay, good. And bring data closer. As I get started, I can get started on a variety of platforms. Mm -hmm. And today is, this session is about Xamarin and Visual Studio 2017. We can, with one click, we can create a collection. Data in DocumentDB is stored in collections. Oh. So we can create a collection. Once a collection is created, we can download a sample already configured to your DocumentDB account. You don't need to change anything. You can just use it. Click done, go. And then exactly. if, you're, if you're creating backend apps and you're creating like an ASP.NET core application, you could look at that reference. It's the same thing, see. exactly. Because often you need a web backend for your front, you know, and things like that too. Yep, um, if yep, you want to yep. scale and do like an admin portal, maybe something yep, like that. Yep, 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 yep. Very yep, cool. Yep. So this is this is the this is the this is the one that just to save save us a couple of minutes. This is the one that I downloaded and I opened it in Visual Studio 2017, and here I have uh, it already pre-connected to the account that I that I created earlier, right? V VS Launch, and it's already re it's ready to go. Uh, don't worry about this account key. We'll talk about it in a second. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so good. it's a simple to-do app. Uh, in fact, I already have it running right here. Uh, oops. Again, oops. There you go. I have it right here. Uh, running a little ahead of us of ourselves. And it's a simple to-do app. I can add uh, some items. Eat food, important. Um, now I can go and look it up in the portal, and I can see that this, that this data is already stored, right? And I can look it up, and I, there you go, eat food. Notice the speed, right? Yeah. Like, usually no we do these demos. Well. We do these demos with, and typically it has a client and a middle tier and a database, and it takes some time, a little bit of time, right? And, it is, and it's an art to make it faster. So you're not with talking this, to a backend, or you're, you're talking directly to the we're database. We're talking directly to the database, Got it. right? Mm -hmm. And it's very, and for many scenarios, that's all you really need. Uh, now, this is all any mobile backend these days uh, can do this to do list, right? It's, there's nothing new. Right? Yeah. But let's talk about the schema list, right? Yeah. So I'm working on, on the version two of to do list. Yep, got to improve it. Two, version two, improve. One, one better than Absolutely. version one. And I want to get organized. So I want to have priorities for my items. So let's add another property, right, called priority. So this is just simple JSON properties, and you just add them out, and it knows because it's sending JSON to and from, yep, yep, essentially. Yep, yep. Yeah, the database that actually supports JSON first class, including you can write scripts that run inside database mm -hmm. in JavaScript. And it's like every all the data model is JSON data model. Very cool. Um, and now let's, when I'm inserting, I want to set, now I'm not that organized, so all my items priorities. Probably number one. Will be one. Yeah, I like that. It's always the number yeah. one priority. Exactly. One base, not zero okay, base for so, priority. All right. So uh, let's run this. And we are using connectivity. So we are running on Windows with VM right here, mm -hmm. and we're going to launch it. And we're going to, since we have to run it on a Mac, we're going to run it on a, on, on a host. So I'm running on a Mac, we're running on a host on iOS simulator. Sure. And uh, while Let it's it going, up. Yeah. yeah, it's got it. So, it's so, so if, I was, if I was running the Android version of this and I was still on version one, even though you've just modified the schema, you've modified it via the app. So the app is sending the new schema up mm -hmm. to DocumentDB yep. at this point? Yep. Oh, I see. Okay, so we have a. Oh, yes, yeah, there you go. End. Yes, okay, you're, uh, yeah, well, let's keep sure us. We yeah, we're keeping property. us honest. Yes. Here, all right. And I see you made it a nullable property. Is that important when we're adding new things? Yeah, so we're talking about changing schemas. And on the back end, as you will see, you don't need to do anything. Okay. Uh, we are not going to touch the back end. On the client, of course, same versioning guidelines apply. If you're yep. making modifications to your data, you better make, if you're adding properties, you better make them nullable. Otherwise, you'll keep running into. Uh, Value up, okay, some absent, issues right? essentially. In case yeah. your Android app sends, sends the, the record without this uh, property in iOS, it can only be it. as smart exactly. as, as possible. It yes. doesn't know, you know, and the apps need to handle that null case. That makes sense. When I'm often changing my scheme, I'm always making sure that it, it, what version was it coming from? Are those values null or not? Back and forth at, at that point, which makes a lot of sense. Yep. Cool, so okay, so again. let's do this. 
Let's get some milk, as we always do with to do lists. There we go. Right? Boom. And, and let's refresh. refresh All right. And let's see. Ah. Well, now we have, we're working with two types of data, yep. right? With two structures. And I did not have to do anything on the back end. No schema required. And that's not, this is a simple modification. Mm -hmm. Now, I can change completely the schema or the structure of my data. There's no schema. I can add, it could be completely of different, it could be nested objects, could be anything. I can store any different types of objects in the same collection. Items could have other lists of items and, and animals could have lists of dogs and cars could have uh, tires and uh, mappings and child, you know, parent relationships essentially. And it doesn't matter. I could, I could add exactly. that in version 8 and boom, all my apps are okay. Exactly. And that's yeah. a very important part mm -hmm. when it comes to DocumentDB is think of collections not as tables in SQL. Yeah. Because collections are heterogeneous data okay. stores, right? You can store anything. Think of them, of them as databases in yep. transactional terms. Your transaction cannot span multiple collections, okay. just like it cannot span multiple databases. Okay, gotcha, yeah. yeah so that's a more, sense. and that's like not, not quite as straightforward to transition to, but this is a very important part because it also saves you money. Yes. The less collections you create, the <laughs> less, the less uh, money you pay. Um, great, so this is a very simple application, right? And we're just getting started. Uh, what we can do now is, we can ship it to the store. Before we do that, though, we have to deal with the security key, right? Yeah, sure. Like any application, we, we don't want to embed keys into our application and things like that. And I noticed up top, essentially, you have a URL pointing to Azure. You have the database ID, the collection ID. So your database ID could have multiple collections associated with So I might have items, I might have puppies, yep. I might have kitties, I might have monkeys um, inside of there. And then that account key, that's, that's giving the user unlimited access at this point. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So we want to remove that. And yep. usually, and we're not going to do it for just for the sake of time right now, but what you can do with DocumentDB is DocumentDB supports built-in authorization rules. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, via simple things called resource tokens. Okay. These are short-lived tokens that can be issued to the, that can be issued to the, to the user. I have a sample on GitHub that shows you how to authenticate using Facebook or Active Directory or any other identity provider yeah. and exchange your Active Directory token for this resource token and then talk to DocumentDB. And you can associate and map any, you can map these tokens to a single document. So you really have a only document author, only the person who wrote the document can access it. Got it. Or you can associate it with a partition key, uh, which is a group of like, let's say your tenant or your user so only user can only see his own documents, cannot see other users' documents. Got it. You so can it, associate. So you, you would follow the, the familiar OAuth flow exactly. essentially that you're exactly. using. It makes exactly. sense. If you're exactly. using Azure AD or Facebook yep. or some other yep. auth, boom, good to yep. go. So take a look at oh. that sample it's, that explains how to how to do this. Now, this is simple data though, just items. And when you talk about a, a geo geospatial, when you talk about a amount amount of data. Um, this, the default sample doesn't necessarily highlight that. Is there something that really highlights Yeah, that? We'll, yeah. and we'll get to it, okay, right? Gotcha. Just want to make sure we yeah, get into yeah, that. Yeah, we'll definitely get, get into yeah. this. Um, let's get, uh, quickly go through the main concepts of DocumentDB once okay. you have an app that is ready to be deployed to yep. production, right? So first, you, you expect that your app will be popular, yep. right? So you probably I need do. to All scale. my apps are super popular. Exactly. I don't so, know about you. So, DocumentDB is a database as a service. You don't yeah. have to think about VMs, uh, instance plans, none of large, Excel, extra large, none of that. There's the a database of course. that. That there is, is my a database, service. right? Got it. Yep. And all you need to tell the database is what throughput do you want us to honor? I want the best. I want the biggest. The, how big is your pipe? How big is the the tube that that the, the data can flow through? How much? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Right. And uh, inner tubes. Really, it's only limited by how much you are willing to pay. Got it. <laughs> so yes. the throughput. All of it. Is there a free version? Is this free? Can I get a free? There version? is a free version. I important like that. important I like question. Free. There is a free version which is, which you, you can download by googling up DocumentDB, hmm. uh, and DocumentDB free. That's usually when people ask me, "Is there a free version?" I don't know. What did you just ask me? DocumentDB free. Be free exactly. And, and what, what it'll mean? give you, it'll give you to the. Start free with emulator. Oh, okay, emulator gotcha. is a full fidelity emulator that runs locally, that's absolutely free, and you can get all the features of DocumentDB on that emulator. Beautiful. Um, except maybe GeoReplication because it really runs yeah, on your machine. Yeah, it's on your machine. Right. I mean, you can <laughs> ship your computer around, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, Are you, you, can, you can set throughput, and you set throughput using request units. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the default collection that you created using, uh, using Get Started is configured with 400 request units. And okay. this is 400 read requests per second of one kilobyte documents. Got it. And RU request unit is a currency that is better than dollar. It'll, it'll be one read request. One RU is one read of 1K document per, uh, today, tomorrow, until the end of time. Got it. Every operation has associated weight of RUs. And so when you specify 400, you have 400 request units. Uh, now here I have a large collection mm. that's uh, it's an IoT scenario. It ingests a lot of data. Uh, and this is configured with quarter of a million request units per oh, second. Okay. And I'm pumping millions of requests per minute right now uh, yeah. into that. Um, and that's it. It doesn't matter how much data you store, we'll just keep scaling keep out and keep going and keep going. You can adjust the throughput programmatically. Okay. You can create an auto scale plan, oh, like nice. auto scale scripts that runs behind the scenes and monitors your throughput. And if throughput grows, you can adjust to accommodate your yeah, peaks. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of auto scale. I've done that for all my applications and it saves tons of money because you, you pe right. peaks and valleys, right? Yep, yep, yep. yep. Cool. Another important part here is. Mm. Uh, we talked about latency, right? So like you have that app and it's growing and the throughput is growing. And what typically happens if you're just doing vanilla, just put together your own, your backend is the more throughput you put, the slower it becomes, right? Yep. With DocumentDB, these are two separate concepts. You okay. set a throughput, doesn't matter what throughput you set, we're gonna honor the latency. Mm. And we give you guarantees for latency. Um, so for example, for this IoT collection, while we're honoring this millions requests per minute, you keep the we keep, the latency is below two milliseconds. Oh wow, yeah, yep. And right SLA latency is ten. Yep. Right latency is a little higher. Our guarantee is less than ten milliseconds for reads at 99th percentile, 99 nice. percent of the time. We give you less than ten milliseconds for reads and less than fifteen milliseconds for writes. And this sample is doing. I see on the top right over here. That's millions. Millions. Millions of millions requests in this sample. Yes. So it is Me crazy. So when you talk about when you scale out to millions of users. I mean, Document TV is going to have you covered in that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. yep. Now, another important aspect of Document TV that makes it very attractive for mobile apps and, uh, and many other apps is that sometimes apps go global. Yep. Right. Um, and then you can go and replicate it. Yeah. So, for instance, I, I may launch and maybe for some reason in Europe it gets on some viral campaign and my app blows up overnight. I'm number one in the app store. And I want to make sure that my European customers are super happy. Like that, that exactly. happens. I, I've, yep. I've talked to game developers, I've talked to app developers, and Apple features your application, then boom, overnight you're, you're a huge success. But if you're doing a round trip every single time, it takes, maybe it, it, takes it, some time. Yeah, it takes some time. If, for example, if it's, in, if it's in Japan and you're talking to a East US data center, it may be 200 milliseconds. Yeah. And if you're doing lots of requests, that becomes really visible. Yeah. Um, with DocumentDB, with just few, one click on a map, you can bring your data, you can make it bring your data to your user no matter where it is. It is just one click. That is, that is click how on easy it is. One click. One click on a map. And all your data is everywhere. Any of the, the 34 data region survivor. And as we add more, you just keep going. Now, you is that read going. write or is that just read? A important one. Yeah, so the default configuration is you have single write region, mm -hmm. all other regions are read regions. Makes sense. And, but you can fail over. Um, so if I discard it, you can fail over by specifying priorities. Okay. And this is important for rainy day scenarios, right? Yeah. If something happened, a meteorite flew and, and removed East US region. Yeah. Would be unfortunate. Thankfully, with DocumentDB, hmm. we'll just say that, okay, well, if West US was removed, it'll just fail over first to East US 2. Got now, it. if there it was a meteorite shower, and East US 2 was removed, it'll just fail over to Canada Central. And then it'll handle, once West US is back up, it'll handle everything exactly. for you. Exactly. It's beautiful. Um, the uh, other important part is you can manually fail over. And that's an important when you said that, okay, what if I want to write fast as well? Yeah. Sometimes it's important that writes yeah. are also super fast. You can make it, uh, a poly cre create a policy that follows the clock and fails over right mm -hmm. region around the globe oh, as, we keep, as the sun keeps cool. circling so that you, where most of your users are active, that's where the right region is. Yep. All the all those regions are read regions. Yeah, you realize that hey, at, at 5 p.m. for some reason that is the time where my app has the most activity, but it's 5 p.m. in each time zone. So you just pop, 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 pop. And yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Awesome. That's, That's one great. app. The other, mm -hmm. uh, we have another uh, pattern that allows you to do multi-region right, multi writes and we're about to publish an article on how to do this. Oh, cool. Um, so these are all great 
features of the service. It's a managed service. All of these capabilities are offered to you with SLA, four nines SLA. So 99.99% of the time. It's a lot of nines. It's a lot it's, of nines. It's, I, I it's can't nearly even, 100%. I can't even say it straight forward. Yep. <laughs> uh, for mobile developers, though, there are lots of other functionalities that is available that is very interesting. For example, let's show uh, this app. Now, this is a map, right? And we are in Seattle. And this, this, allow, this app allows you to select a region. And it's built using Xamarin and DocumentDB. So you're like kind of specifying a region yep. over here. And I can get earthquakes. And I may have selected a largish region. We'll see. That is, that is a large region. Right. But uh, what it'll do is that it will query. And there, there we have. Uh, we have, we, we have uh, some earthquakes pop up. Oh, what do you know? Mm -hmm. What this does is that you select a region and that it queries uh, for all the earthquakes within that region. Got it. Right? And Using there's earthquakes all over the place all the time. You don't even know. It's very scary. Yep, yep, it's, yep. It's, it's, uh, I remember looking at a heat, a heat map one time and I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, just. And not too many in Seattle. I'm pretty. Yeah, pretty but it, like, if you look at places like Oklahoma with all the, all, with all the drills, yeah. uh, you'll see there are quite a few. Now, this is an example of geospatial queries, mm -hmm. something that if you have to do it by hand yourself, that's a lot of work to do. Thankfully, with DocumentDB, uh, if we bring in the source code for this. The region definer. So you define the region, and you don't have to do any work in your app, essentially, to the, the, docu the, the DocumentDB handles it for Yeah, you. we'll show you. It's, okay. We have geospatial queries built in mm. in the link syntax. Got it. So you have strongly typed queries, um, and not only you just can query where A equal B, et cetera, but you can actually pass uh, a proper uh, polygon, and you don't have to write any code. DocumentDB handles, for you, handles this for you and runs a query on the server. It's an optimized index. Uh, we support geospatial types indexing. Nice. So it gives you results pretty fast uh, from the list. So le Let's take a look at what does a query look like. Right? And this was just a sample where where you just I think before it was like hard coding some things in, and you just imported a, a services earthquakes yeah. into your document DB, and then it just goes back and forth. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. We we're using G, uh, USCS um, uh, uh, public feed of earthquakes, mm -hmm. and we keep storing them in document DB, and now we can query them. And that's all that it takes to query, right? It's just. Very simple, quake.location, any geospatial type has a location uh, method on it, and you can go within and you can pass a polygon. And it's basically, yeah, you, can, you can send it rich link queries, and then it figures it all out on yep. the back end. And it translates. So mm -hmm. this, this, query, this is geospatial queries are uh, first class supported uh, in JavaScript, in SQL, in our SQL language. So you can type in, is it directly SQL with geospatial queries? Mm -hmm. And we also implemented it in our LinkedIn uh, li uh, link provider. Beautiful. Now, it, how do people get actual document DB in their Xamarin applications? Like, I mean, we, we, there's right. a sample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But let's say they're like people already, you know, you're, you're a developer and you're like, hey, I have this great application idea and I want to add document DB, but I want to do more than the sample. How do I get that? Uh, using NuGet. Yeah, so you have to Everyone's, do. Of yep. course, of course, yep. it's a, yep. a little. Yeah, so we managed to get packages and. It's a new Git package, and hopefully it'll, it'll just show it, show it to us in the installed. I'm using an RC version. RTM version is available. <laughs> uh, there but there go. you go, Microsoft Azure DocDB.core. This is the one that you want. And this is a .NET standard library? This is .NET, st .NET standard library, Beautiful. and it works with Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android. Mm -hmm. And then it would, if, since it's a .NET standard library, it would work in any of your .NET Core applications, yep. anyone else that supports .NET standard libraries. Yep. That's awesome. Exactly. So all these samples, uh, obviously, Quick Starts is available in Azure Portal. Earthquake sample we're going to make available on GitHub. Uh, just look for uh, github.azure.documentdb. You'll find the sam Xamarin samples there. Awesome. Do we have any questions over there, Seth? Yes. And uh, this is for me because we haven't had com any come in on social. By the way, if you have questions, uh, hold on. They're telling me I'm on mute. 
Uh oh. There we go. There we go. There we go. Noob, noob here. <laughs> So I have some questions. By the way, if you have questions, use hashtag VS2017. We'll get them on the uh, tag board here so we can uh, get them asked to the people. Uh, but my question to you is this. I come from a relational database perspective. How do I know, how do I move over to sort of a document database? Where's the boundaries between what are inside of the collections versus what are inside the tables. You see what I'm asking? Yep, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great question. Uh, most of our customers ask themselves this very question all the time. Uh, first of all, for many scenarios, SQL is a great database, so you don't have to move over. Right? Uh, now, at times you will find scenarios that require these things that NoSQLs are great at, is schema varies, you need, you, you're tired of doing ultra table all the time and it's costly, uh, large volumes of data, need to scale out. When it happens, think of collections transactionally as your databases. Think of, you can store any objects, it's a very important change from tables to collections. In collections you can store any objects of any types. Queries are the same as you had before, just like we, we had, uh, um, let me bring up the portal, we can go and query the data that we stored earlier using simple SQL syntax. So you have a whole query explorer. So yep. if it's you use the SQL commands, you would still be able to do your SQL. Exactly. Commands. So that, from that mm. perspective, nothing changes from you, right? You, mm. can, you can add where clauses, everything is the same. But you can do so much more. You can, your documents now can do, uh, your documents now can have different structures. Uh, hit collections are heterogeneous, you can have nested documents, um, it's JSON. So I, I love that idea. My question though is more of a, like for when you do the to-do app, it, it's super nice because there's just to-dos. Yeah. Uh, but when I start to have a more complicated app, is it more of a hybrid? Is there data that sums in SQL and sums in DocumentDB? Uh, is it all DocumentDB? Tell me about the sort of applications that you're seeing being built with DocumentDB. Yeah, easily. Very common is IoT, IoT scenarios, mobile scenarios, where cha data changes, l large volumes of requests, data changes rapidly. Um, retail scenarios, catalogs, where just schemas too complex to express in SQL, and again, changes rapidly. In those scenarios, everything goes into one database. That's the other important part, because uh, DocumentDB allows you to sustain large throughput of data, and at the same time offer data at very low latencies, you can have, you don't have to go and kind of create different databases for reads and writes, all in one database. Uh, for your query, your, query, your analytics, uh, and, your throop, and your data ingestion pipeline, they all go point to the same, to the same database. Um, your code, again, very similar to what you had with SQL, you just, you're using the same SQL statements, just moving them over. Your data, most of your tables will end up in a single collection. Sometimes it's useful to separate collections, but you, you, you need to optimize it for latencies and throughput. So you, optimi you optimize it for performance reasons, not necessarily for data schema reasons. So you might no have schema. duplication of data across and that's okay. You may have, yep. You, or, or more likely you can split your data for, here's a collection that stores all my reference data. And here's a collection that stores all my operational data. I see. That makes sense because they need to be configured to different throughput uh, reasons. Uh, they, need, they have different partition keys. They need to be partitioned uh, differently. That's more, those are the factors that you take into account when deciding how many collections do I want. Got as it. opposed to, okay, I definitely need to put orders in one collection and customers in the other. Customers and orders go into the same collection. I love it. So there's a question here from uh, uh, this gentleman here, GC man, is it possible to specify more write regions for document DB? And we'll finish with this one. We have an article uh, on MSDN that explains how to do multi-write, uh, multi-region write with the setup with document DB. Um, there are two patterns, briefly. One is the, you follow the clock. So it's a single write region, but it changes as the clock moves. Second pattern is you, you have actual multiple regions that take write, and you, where you create two DocumentDB accounts. I don't, I'm not going to go into details. <laughs> uh, so the article explains how to you do, can do it. That's you the can point. Do it. You can yeah. do it. Awesome. So yes. you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I love the demo. It's cool to see how you can use DocumentDB to make your app planet scale. 
Super excited about that. We have one more session coming up. Top seven things to be excited about as a C++ developer in Visual Studio. As always, as the session is going, please ask your questions using hashtag VS2017. We will ask the experts uh, your questions live if, you, if you're able to get it in early enough. Uh, and so uh, with that, we're going to go to a little bit of a break. And after, we're going to have Daniel and Steve talk about how to be excited about C++ in Visual Studio. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>